hey, hey, what's going on, guys? This is Dana. Good morning. It's about five after five over here on the East Coast in the morning. And guys, what you're looking at is uh, I've got this room completely cleared now. I'm getting ready to put my condo up for sale. Remember, I'm on the first floor, three-story condo, directly in the flight path of Dulles International Airport. So you can see my $3 uh, sound shield that I built out of PVC pipe. It's one inch pipe, very easy to do. Uh, nothing's glued together. I just drape a towel right over it, fold it twice, and it works wonders. There is no furniture in this room except what you see in this picture. Now, the microphone is on a, a Rode boom arm. And guys, this is critical. People do not understand. You've got to be able to have your mic in a position to where it doesn't move. And you're comfortable when you're speaking. Now, right now, I am about two inches away from a ATR 2100 dynamic microphone. It's hooked into a three foot XLR cable that goes into the Tascam DR40 digital recorder. This is the cleanest path you can achieve for recording digital audio. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and get off of this picture now, and we're going to go up and I'm going to show you some of the features of the DR40. And from there, we're going to put it into Reaper, and I'm going to show you how simple it is to meet the ACX requirements. We're going to use one plugin. Okay? So let's go ahead and check out Tascam. Okay, guys, here we are. This is the Tascam DR40 linear PCM recorder. Now, what this is showing us is if you look into the window, it's recording in the WAV format, 16-bit, 44.1K. Now, on this picture, it says stereo, but I'm actually recording using mono because I want to keep it in mono for the ACX uh, and even for podcasting. You know, if you're not going to have a bunch of sound effects and music, stay in mono. Now, here, if you look to the left there, you'll see where it says uh, four channel right up here. And we're not recording in the four channel mode. Like I said, we were recording in mono. Now, one of the best features of this is where you see this little dual. Uh, you can actually, uh, when you set your input levels, you can set this up to a dual recording, which will also give you a second recording at 12 dBs lower than what your initial input is. This is called a safety file. And what this does, if, if you have any part of your audio that's clipping, then being recorded at 12 dBs lower as your input, you'll have no clips whatsoever. Now, here again, this is mostly set up for music. Uh, when you're doing narration, it's, it's just you're not going to need to do it, okay? Now, over here is your peak light. Uh, you'll see uh, it'll come on red. And this is very important. You see this little diamond right here that's right above uh, the crosshair. That is the sweet spot for your input level. And it's real simple to do to adjust the input level. I just got to figure out what picture we're going to get on here. So I'll, I'll bring that up to you when we get there. But with this, when, when, you, when you turn it on, you turn it on by pressing the home key. Uh, two seconds, it'll come on. You're going to repress, uh, press the record and it's going to start flashing. At this time, this allows you to set your input levels. And there they are right there. Okay. So let's just go over these buttons real fast. This is for your uh, headphone or a line out. Now, external in. If you're going to use a guitar or something that has a line signal, you're going to move this switch up. As you can see, I have it set right here in the mic position because that's what I'm using. Now, if you were going to use a condenser microphone, you would set it on mic plus phantom. This comes with built-in phantom power. Okay, guys, listen. This thing averages 17 hours on one set of batteries. Okay, so here's the input level. Like I said, you would press this up to get it to that triangle. Okay, that's our goal right there. We want this level to just stay right around that triangle. So then from there, when I get finished with this recording, 
I'm going to simply take my USB plug, I'm going to plug it in here. Then I'm running uh, Windows 8 on this computer. I'm simply going to go to my PC and it's going to show me this input and it's going to say DR40. And, and how you do that is simply this. It's, it's again, so simple. Once you have this plugged into your computer, okay, you're going to turn it off. You're going to plug it into your computer. You're going to turn it back on. Then you're going to have a window up here and it's going to say storage or power supply. Well, you can actually run this off of your USB power. Uh, myself, I don't. I just switch the batteries out. I don't have to worry about a surge protector or a uh, power conditioner. All of this is taken totally out of the equation. Like I said, this is your cleanest form of recording digital audio. So once I turn the power back on, I'm simply going to push the down key and it's going to go to storage. When I do that, that's when I go to my PC and I open this up and I'm going to show you in the video here just in a little bit exactly how simple that is to do. Okay, now. Here's your two XLR inputs. Now, they're a combo jack. OK, it'll take the XLR or the quarter inch. And that's why they call it a combo jack. Uh, then you have the external mic or the line in. Uh, that's what these are for. This uh, right here is simply for the remote. Uh, I don't use the remote. I don't have the remote. I don't need the remote. Uh, you know, if you're if you're in a band and and you got it set up. Uh, let me get back to the back picture of it right here. Uh, this is another nice feature. This right here takes a standard uh, fitting for a tripod. And I've, I've, if I'm going out somewhere and recording remotely, I take my tripod. And that way I can set my tripod up. I have this right in front of me. And it's very, very simple to push the buttons. Okay. And that's it. That is the basic features as far as narration or podcasting for the Tascam DR40. Now, like I said, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video, and then I'm going to start recording the other part of the screen to where I start to switch this file over. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, guys, so what I'm going to do now, as you can see, I've got my... Uh, cable plugged in i've got the xlr jack unplugged and i simply plugged this mic over into the uh Aleus multi mix eight and i'm going to turn the power on now it's going to be hard for you to see but it says uh select uh usb power or bus power or storage i'm simply going to click or push the down and i'm going to hit okay the center button so now it's connecting to the USB. At this time, I'm going to go over to my PC. Or this PC, I apologize. We come down and there is the DR40. I'm simply going to click it, come up to music. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to place this on my desktop. And there it goes. And there is my waveform. Okay, as you can see, it gives me uh, exactly what it is. So I can take this down, simply drop it into Reaper. And there it is. There is my waveform. Okay, that is the audio that we just you or made uh, for the first part of the video. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a few seconds here and I'm going to stop so I can disconnect the task cam and get it turned off to save my battery life. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, guys, so here we are in Reaper now. Okay, so this is our original WAV file that's at the front of the video. This is what we recorded on the task cam. Now I am using the ATR2100. I simply have it patched into my Multi-Mix 8 this time. 
and I'm using it to record the rest of the video. So this is the waveform. And I'm going to show you what a lot of people do, and this is where they get confused. Okay, and I'm just going to trap a little bit of this audio. And with Reaper, you just click the toggle, and I'm going to hit play uh, because this is our silence area. This is our dead space, our room tone, whatever you want to call it. And then they'll check their meters like we have going over here. Now, the green meter, as you can see, this is the RMS meter. The blue meter is the peak meter. And they say, well, man, look, you know, my, my levels are real low. Well, that's true, guys. They are low, but we have not brought this up to where it needs to be as far as volume-wise. Okay? So we're, we're still at that low input. We've got to, to meet those requirements uh, between the negative 18 and negative 23 RMS level. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. I'm going to leave this window just like it sits. Now, guys, this is real simple with a Reaper. Or a Reaper, we're going to double click the track. Boom, boom. If you look right down here, you see where it says normalize. You see where it told me that we've got to move that 14.2 dBs to bring us close or dead on uh, without clipping to zero dBs. Now, I want you to watch this waveform grow as I click apply. Boom. You see that? We're going to say, OK. Now, let's check this again. Now, look at your meters. You see, neither one of these will pass the ACX. But we did bring it up to where we needed it to be. OK, so that's the first thing. Now, this is what I do. I'm going to show you my process real fast. With Reaper, I just left mouse click and I can move this track anywhere I want to. So I'm going to bring it here and just zoom in. I want to see that four and five minutes. Okay, so I'm going to grab the track again. And I'm going to bring this right down here. And what I'm doing, guys, is I'm aligning up for my one second. And that's what you have to have for the ACX. So now I come over here and I put my cursor on the number four. And I can fine tune it. Okay, they, they want consistency. Now, at this point, I'm going to hit the S key. That is going to split my track. Okay, now I want you to look right up here. This is called ripple editing. That's for all the tracks. We're just working with one track. That's off. This is just per track now. So when I delete this part I do not want, my track automatically comes all the way over to the front. So any edit I make in this file, and, and I'm going to show you just, I'm going to use this as an example. If I split it here and I split it here, let's say this was a mistake, uh, something I wanted to take out, I highlight that, I hit delete, boom, it's right back over to what it was. Okay. Now let me show you another very fantastic thing with Reaper. You see where it says delete items up here? The last thing you do, this is your undo list. So you see, I can come right back over here. I can come back to literally when I inserted the media. And I'm going to come up here just where it says split items. Split items. And we'll come to this one. Just double click it. You see, that split is now gone. Double click this one. That split is now gone. And you can do this all the way through until you export this file. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and move this back over where we had it. So now the plugin, this is the plugin. It's called Tri-Leveler Voice Processor. OK, we've got it set to a negative 70 or 17, <laughs> negative 70. I'm thinking about my uh, noise floor. Uh, a negative 17. The low cut filter I have disabled. Uh, the high cut, as far as my voice, I put it on 16,000 hertz. Uh, the expander gate, I'm going to move to a negative 40 uh, because I know how my voice is. I know how I speak. The output trim is a negative 3.5. Okay, this, everything else stays just like it is. So let's go ahead and bring up the audio statistics. Now, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to now just render this audio. 
and we're going to name it one, two, three. We're going to keep it in the mono. That's where we want it. It's going to be an MP3 right here. Oh, 192 KBPS. That's what the ACX wants. And add rendered items to new track and project. And that's going to put it back in the Reaper. So I do not have to go hunt it down. I want you to watch the green down here. If you start seeing red lines, it's because you've got a problem in your audio. We're not concerned with the DC offset. We're looking for three things. This, uh, where you see the one negative, uh, negative 114, this is our noise floor, our true peak, and then our RMS total loudness. We say render one file, and there it goes. Look at the green. You'll never see any red coming through here. Okay? Up here, look at our true peak, a negative 3.6. Look at our RMS. Now, you guys watch enough of my videos, you know I like to shoot for the dead center. So around a negative 20, I am totally fine with. Our peak level is a negative 3.56. Our noise floor is a negative 104.02. I simply hit close. We don't need that anymore. There is our processed track. Okay, I'm going to right mouse click that track. I'm going to open it up in Audacity just for those that want to, uh, if you still use Audacity, man, uh, get, uh, get off of it. Okay, like the, 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 the old videos were, stop the madness. Okay, so we come up to Analyze, Nyquist, ACX check, Passed, Past, past. Guys, I can do this all day long. This process is so simple. Okay. Now, I want you to understand from the very beginning, I am in an untreated room, no furniture whatsoever. A $3 homemade sound shield, a towel going from a dynamic ATR 2100 microphone into a Tascam DR40 digital recorder. So let's go ahead and listen. We're going to solo this out, and let's just listen now, because you're going to hear this twice. Like I said, this is, this is on the video. Hey, 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 what's going on, guys? This is Dana. Good morning. It's about five after five over here on the East Coast in the morning. And guys, what you're looking at is uh, I've got this room completely cleared. Now I'm getting ready to put my condo up. OK, so if you also notice, guys, we've used no noise reduction whatsoever. No EQing whatsoever. OK. That's it. Take care. God bless. And we are. Out of here.